If you've been struggling with Golden Brands 444 Soy Wax, I've got some great tips and tricks that'll help you master working with 100% soy wax. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Carrie, owner and maker of Couture Home and Body. I'm so glad you're here. I'm gonna preface all of this by saying these are just my opinions and my experience working with 444 Golden Brands Soy Wax. I wanna say I absolutely love working with it, though it was very tricky to stop. But I was really committed to making sure I was using 100% organic soy wax for my product line. So I was committed to digging in and making sure that I could master working with this wax. If you're willing to have some patience like me, then I think 444 wax is the perfect wax to work with. Let's get into it. I know it's very controversial, but soy wax is notorious for several things. And one of those being the dreaded sinkholes. Now, this is such an easy fix. It's all in how you are pouring your candles. What causes those sinkholes is that your wax is cooling too quickly. The candle is cooling very quickly on top versus the bottom where it's the hottest. So all of that air that's trapped is, is working its way up the candle so it can release. And then what's happening is you're getting those sinkholes. There are a couple of ways to fix this. I know they're very annoying, which is to do a second pour. I personally hate that. It's more work and it's it just becomes high maintenance. That is one solution that you could do is a second pour of wax. <clears throat> I don't like it. I wanna be more efficient. Um, another solution is of course, you can poke holes with a skewer um, or a toothpick and then heat gun the top. That's a fine solution as well. But to avoid the sinkholes altogether so that you don't have to do any of that bullshit is to make sure that you are pouring your wax at an appropriate temperature. I pour my wax at 130 degrees. It is recommended by the manufacturer that I pour between 135 and 140. So I used to pour between 135 and 138, but to get like the perfect, like smoothest top, I find that the cooler the wax is, the more even and slowly, slow to cool the candle becomes. So I pour at 130 and I very rarely have to deal with sinkholes. If you've watched my candle making videos on this channel, then you will see that it has to cool. When I'm doing it in batches, it takes a long time for it to cool to get to the proper pouring temperature. When I say a long time, it's like 45 minutes. And so people do not like that. They wanna be able to pour very quickly because they wanna just make the candles. But for me, I've, I found my way and I found my groove with it. And if you're willing to have a little more time and some grace with these candles, you're gonna have the most amazing product. All right, another issue that I see a lot is bubbles. It's the same thing as the wax is, is cooling at different temperatures between the bottom and the top and the air just needs somewhere to escape. I definitely still get air bubbles. I mean, it's not like all perfect. When I pour my soy wax candles, a heat gun helps zap those pretty quickly. And I will do a heat gun in a circular motion. I find that that helps direct the wax around the surface of the vessel. So that way it's not just going straight down on the bubble and causing it to go like burrow into the candle. I find just doing a circular sweep of my heat gun around the top if I get um, air bubbles. That way you're kind of popping the bubbles as you're rotating it and just gently tap your vessel. All right, another issue I see people complaining about is frosting. This typically only happens with natural um, waxes and frosting is simply a byproduct of using a natural wax. You guys, it's really difficult to get away from because eventually, no matter what you do to prep it um, in advance, eventually it's going to frost. Even after you've already lit a candle and if you just let it sit and you haven't burned it, so imagine your customer is doing that, it's going to frost. These are just little crystals that form on the top of the wax. It's not a big deal. It's strictly aesthetic. But if customers have questions, just be armed with the, uh, the information and let them know that it's totally natural. If anything, that could also be a little plus too. If you're using all natural products and ingredients in your candle line, 
you can say, hey, that's how you know this is 100% natural because you're seeing the little crystal, you're seeing the frosting. What can you do to try and prevent it? There are a couple things you can do. You can preheat your vessels prior to pouring. I haven't found that that's entirely successful. I think it really depends on the vessel. This may work better in concrete versus glass because concrete is gonna be able to hold the heat in and it will cool slower. This is a really funny one because I mean, it's just again, a byproduct of using a natural product and that is having rough, bumpy tops to all of your candles. <laughs> Here's the thing, you guys. If you pour at a lower temperature, you are going to be able to avoid that almost entirely. I find, again, that 130, 130 degrees is my sweet spot, but here's the thing. Once you sell that candle and it gets burned for the first time, when they blow it out and the candle cools, Frankenstein's face is back. Like, that is just the natural, you know, makeup of a soy wax candle. It's going to be bumpy, rough, and that's just what it is. I mean, it, they're monstrous, you know? It's just really monstrous sometimes, but that's just, it's not a big deal. Again, it's aesthetic, and I understand wanting to sell a candle with a smooth top. Pour lower, and you'll find that you have to do less work once they're done. Something I see a lot of, and also in students that I have taught how to make candles, we use 100% soy wax. We use the Golden Brands 444. Something that I notice in the learning process is when they add the fragrance oil, they want to stir like really vigorously, like that's going to make the oil bind to the wax better. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter how vigorously you stir, it's not going to make the oil bind to the wax better. The two week cure time is going to help it bind. What you are doing, however, is if you stir vigor vigorously, you're incorporating air bubbles into the wax. So when you go to pour that candle, those are gonna rise up to the top and that's gonna contribute to your sinkholes. You just need to simply stir for two minutes to incorporate the oil with the wax. And just be mindful that you are not incorporating more bubbles. The more agitation, the more bubbles will arise. So if you've noticed that you have a lot of bubbles sitting in your wax while it's cooling to pour, that's gonna be it. Here's what you can do. Be very mindful when you're stirring and stay on the very outside. So if you, here's your vessel, stay on the very outside, like scrape your thermometer across and just do a real slow stir. Another issue I hear folks complaining about is that they soy candles don't give a good hot throw. And that's true if you're not adding the fragrance oil at the proper temp, if you're not stirring for the proper time and allowing them to cure for at least two weeks. I've heard people heat their wax to 160 and then add their fragrance oil. And then they complain that the candle doesn't have a good hot throw. The oil is not hot enough for the fragrance to bind, so therefore you're not gonna get a great hot throw. You might have a decent cold throw. You wanna heat the wax to 185. Heat the wax to 185 degrees and then add your fragrance oil. So after stirring your soy wax and fragrance oil together for two minutes, Tuck them to the side and move on to your next batch. I like to work with soy wax in batches because it does take so long to cool. And this way it allows me to get my pitches ready. And then while I have all of that time, I prep my vessels. And this includes cleaning them out with alcohol of any debris, attaching the wick sticker to the wick, centering it at the bottom, and it's ready to go. And I find that it's the most efficient way to make soy candles because there's no downtime. I'm doing something every minute that I'm waiting for the wax to cool. The most important part of pouring a soy wax candle is pouring it at the proper temperature. Cooling it to 130 gives me the smoothest tops. I don't get sinkholes. I do sometimes get air bubbles. That's the house could be a little bit warmer so it cooled up or if I have lights on and I'm filming while I'm creating the candles, I tend to get more um, air bubbles. But if you follow this basic framework of fragrance oil temperature, cool down time, pouring temperature, I think you will have the most success with your products. So if you have a fragrance oil and you add it to your wax and it's a really viscous oil, my recommendation to you is to reduce your fragrance load. I have found that when I use really viscous, thick fragrance oils in the soy wax, 
it tends to weep out of the wax because it's it's just too thick for it. And I still get a great hot throw, dropping it to seven or seven and a half percent. So if you notice that your candles look like they're a little wet or like weepy on top, it looks like it's a disc discolor, like maybe it could be yellow or a little bit brownish, that is the excess fragrance oil seeping out of the soy wax. So definitely check your fragrance load because you're just wasting money at that point because you're putting in too much oil. And more oil does not equal a stronger hot throw and certainly not with soy wax. This happens a lot with my soy wax candles and that is discoloration. And that really is just the fragrance oil and the vanillin that is in the fragrance oil causing your candles to discolor. It's not like they're ungodly ugly or anything, but <laughs> this is just something to keep in mind that it's totally normal that fragrance oil will color your wax. And with soy wax, because the 444 is like a creamy white, if there's any amount of vanillin in the fragrance oil, it's going to turn. It's, it's gonna be white, with some yellow or it's gonna be yellow or straight up bright yellow. My white Neroli candle is a perfect example of that. It is a gorgeous yellow and I think just adds to the final product. Another common issue, I think with any wax, but it's very prevalent in soy wax is if you have it in a clear glass jar, it'll look like there are wet spots around the vessel. These are not technically wet spots, it's simply that the wax has shrunk and pulled away from your vessel, which is why I recommend with a soy wax, just to, if you don't wanna see the frosting, if you don't wanna see, you know, the wax pulled away that looks like a wet spot, um, I recommend using a ceramic, concrete, or colored, uh, glass jaw vessel. So this is my experience with Golden Brands 444 Soy Wax. I absolutely love to work with it. I would say stick with it, dig your heels in. Soy Wax is a wonderful wax, produces a great cold and hot throw. I mean, my four ounce tins can fill up an entire room. My four ounce tins, when I've done testing, have filled up the whole top floor of my home. Once you've mastered working with 100% soy wax, I think you'll love it too, because it really does bring you in the moment of the candle making journey and the candle making process. And I really appreciate that. It's given me a lot of patience. So if you're anything like me, I say give it a shot. You can certainly buy it in um, small, I think you can get it in like a two pound or a 10 pound. That gives you a lot of room to play around with it and see, and maybe, maybe you want to pour it at 128. Who knows? <laughs> Everybody is different. Your mileage will vary. But I will say that these tips and tricks, when you keep those in mind as you're making your candles, you'll be very happy with your finished products. So hopefully you found this super helpful if you've been on your candle making journey and you're struggling working with soy wax, definitely give some of these a try and see how it improves your final products. And if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate if you considered watching another video. That would really help me out and tells the al algorithm, you are here to hang out with me and you wanna see more. So until the next one, I'll see you then. Bye.